Welcome to Eustick Road Church of the Nazarene in Caldwell, Idaho. And now your speaker, special guest, Brianna Dyer. So today, um, we're going to be in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you... Your children and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you, and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So I really love this um, part of the this section of the Bible because it really talks about this concept that we're supposed to create a culture um, within our own homes uh, to remember who Christ is. So when I was in Bible quizzing, I don't know, we probably did it one time, but I remember us always doing it. Um, we, when we had um, Bible verses that we needed to remember, we would put them in a box and we would put them on our foreheads while we were practicing. And the idea was that... Um, we were to remember it, and it was on our foreheads. And in this part of this scripture, it tells the Israelites to put God's promises on their hands, tie them on their foreheads, to remember them. But it goes further than that. It tells them to speak about them. It tells them to remind their children, to talk about them when they're sitting at, at dinner, to talk about them when they get up, to talk about them when they're tucking their kids into bed, to create a culture in their own homes that reminds their children of who Christ is and who God is to them, and that this is the way to save their children. But our world doesn't really stay on the outside of our door frames anymore. Our world that we are in today with the technology that we have comes into our homes. The world does not wait for us to create a culture. What we bring into our homes, um, it creates a culture for our families. Proverbs 20, 20, 22, 6 says, Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. So today my, bio, my sermon is what I've learned from my dad's favorite TV shows. Um, <laughs> So, um, I want to do something for my dad. Um, if you don't know my dad, he's the pastor here. Um, you should meet him, uh, mainly because you go to this church. But um, my dad and I, growing up, um, we had a pretty close relationship. He, you know, you guys have seen him wrestle kids here. Like, that's how I grew up. <laughs> and um, it was really great, and it was fun, and everything was pretty good growing up. And I got to a spot in life um, where my life wasn't going very well. Um, personally, I emotionally wasn't very stable. Um, I was pretty angry. I was depressed. And my dad and I are so alike um, and just enough different that, that a lot of that anger came out um, on my dad um, and a lot of that frustration and a lot of that aggression. And so for a long time, my dad and I ha didn't really have a very good relationship because it was so hard. Um, and I take like a lot of responsibility for that because I was so angry in general. Um, and my dad was so, so gracious in letting me just kind of have that anger towards him. Um, but as, we've, as the last year and a half probably have gone by and I've really discovered who I am and discovered um, the places that uh, I have pain and the places that that comes out. Um, my dad and I have like really started to grow together in a lot of fun and unique ways. So we now um, have milked cows together and um, we're finding these new ways to connect with each other. We're also going to Jalopy Jungle together and sometimes we take Aaron. Um, and we just bought this really cute car and we're gonna fix it up and I'm so excited. 
Uh, so it's not at my house yet, but if you, when it is, you can come see it because it's cute. Um, but one of my, one of the memories that I always have is like growing up and watching TV with my dad. And I think because that was something that I like doing, I enjoy watching TV. Um, and so there are all these other memories, but that's one that for some reason really sticks out in my mind. So we're going to talk about three different movies or TV shows. So the first one is Hogan's Heroes. So we own all of the Hogan's Heroes seasons on DVD um, at my house. And we would watch them growing up. We watched a lot of shows growing up. And there were all these kind of old shows. They were like Lost in Space. Like Hogan's Heroes starts in black and white. And I know that doesn't sound that crazy, but like I'm 23. Everything was in color when I was born. So um, it's before my time. And so when we would go to school and stuff, Danielle and I'd be like, yeah, Hogan's Heroes. It's my favorite. Oh, yeah, it's so good. And our friends are like, what? I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you're talking about. So um, in case you don't know, the premise of Hogan's Heroes is that there is a, it's during World War II, and there's a POW camp. And this POW camp is run by a pretty incompetent um, individual. And he, uh, and under them is, like underground is an underground, I don't know, operating system. So they have, they move like people in and out, they're able to smuggle things, like tons of information to the enemy, and it's just like insane. But at the same time, they make sure that none of them escape so that they get to keep the kind of incompetent commandant. So I have a funny video that I enjoy um, that we're going to watch, maybe. Yes, we are. Um, so through this whole thing, the idea is that the Commandant really has no clue what's happening. So what I've learned from Hogan's Heroes is that what we see on the surface is not, surface is not always what's happening underneath. What we see um, when we look at people, what we see as their life may not be what's actually happening. So the whole idea of why this gets to keep working is because there's never been escape, an escape from this camp, right? This camp is the ideal camp. But the reality of that camp is that it's like destroying the Third Reich, right? This is the concept. When we look at people, especially at church, I think, we're looking at the best version of each other. So I am going to put my best feet forward when I am interacting with you any day, like, but especially on Sundays. I'm preparing myself. I get ready in the morning knowing that I'm going to make sure that I look good. And that surface may not always be what's happening in reality under that, like in that person's life. So these are the three main characters, the Commandant, uh, Colonel Hogan, and Sergeant Schultz. And Sergeant Schultz is my favorite because he knows everything that's happening um, pretty much, but he just decides not to know what's happening. And he, to me, is very important to this story because he says, he shows us that sometimes it's easier for another person to see what's happening underneath us. In 1 Samuel 16, 7, it says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord looks at the heart because it's different than what's seen on the outside. If what was seen on the outside looked the same as what was on the inside, then why would it matter if God looked at the inside? there is something different about what's happening underneath the surface versus the surface of what you can see. And that's why it matters that Christ looks at it differently. And others may and sometimes will know what is going on. So when we go back to this concept of Sergeant Schultz, Sergeant Schultz, he's like, he's on it. He, not really, but he, he knows what's happening. He knows what's happening in this camp. And he just chooses to um, turn a blind eye to it because he hasn't been asked not to. He's been asked to turn a blind eye to it because it looks better. 
There are times in our lives where things are happening and they may be really obvious to other people. The pain that we're experiencing may be more obvious to another person than it is to us. So Galatians 6, 1 through 2 says, Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. We are instructed by Christ and by the Holy Spirit to ensure that we are all on the same page and that we care about each other. And so sometimes that means looking at, the, at what's happening under the surface and being willing to take on a part of the pain of trying to fix that and trying to solve those problems. So, show number two, Star Trek. Um, Star Trek is awesome. So Star Trek is about a bunch of people. They go to space. They know a bunch of aliens. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say for now. So um, I don't know if you guys have watched Star Trek, but if you have watched any Star Trek, there's something called the Prime Directive. And the Prime Directive is this concept I looked it up so that I could read it the best way possible. Um, okay, so it says the prime directive um, was the embodiment of one of Starfleet's most important ethical principles, non-interference with other cultures and civilizations. At its core was the philosophical concept that covered personnel uh, should refrain from interfering in the natural, unassisted development of societies, even if such interference was well-intentioned. So. Star Trek reminds us that what one person is ready for is not always what another can handle yet. Sometimes it's very easy, once again, coming back to the church, if we are going, if it, sometimes it's really simple for us to make the surface look like we're good to go, like we're ready. And so then when something maybe is off about that person, it can be well-intentioned to critique that person and to give that person criticism, but we are not sure where they are on their journey. So. Um, when people ask me where I am in my faith, I always say, you should probably think of me like I walked into the church about five years ago. Because up until maybe three or four years ago, I really didn't, um, I had a lot of problems with the church. I had a lot of problems with Christ. And so I would add a couple years because I have a lot of knowledge about the Bible. Um, but I'm pretty new on my journey of reality, of actually wanting to be on this journey. So it's been a journey I have had because I've been in the church, but it's not one that I personally decided was going to be my own journey. But I've been teaching Sunday school for 10 years. So if you kind of look at the way that like my life looks, it's confusing, right? Because I was very good at making sure that the surface looked correct. And there were times when, so I had depression, I have depression, and there were times I would come to church and I would have had a horrible morning and I would have done some pretty awful things maybe before church to myself. And the reality is, is that I would come to church and I could make it look good enough, but because people didn't know where I was, the expectations they were putting on me weren't where I was ready for. The expectations of making sure that you are um, holding yourself in a certain way or speaking about Christ in a certain way, I wasn't ready for those because I barely was ready to acknowledge that Christ was real. And I was barely ready to acknowledge Christ as my savior. And it is so important for us to come alongside people, but to never put expectations on that person. Because at the end of the day, we don't know what they're ready for. And the prime directive is this concept that maybe eventually they'll be ready for what we're ready for, but right now, we can't guarantee that that's true. Just because they look like they're ready doesn't mean they are. In 1 Timothy 4.12, Paul says, um, tells Timothy, don't let um, people look down on you because you're young, but set an example for the, leader, for the elders in speech, in life, in love, and in purity. And so Paul tells Timothy to not assume, first of all, that he can't be above and more advanced in his journey than someone else, 
but also to not assume where they are in their journey, but to simply try to make an example. We have to support each other as we allow Christ to move us forward. It's so important for us to support each other. It's so important for us to be there to hold each other when we need that time and when we need, when we're stressed. But when we start saying, I'm the one who can tell you what to do. I'm the one who can tell you how you should be acting or thinking or speaking or what the opinions you should hold. We all of a sudden move into a realm that's not ours because that's not support, right? Support is when I come alongside you and I say, well, what's Christ doing in your life? And you say, uh, I don't like it. And I go, yeah, 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 I know. It's not always fun, right? But when we start putting these expectations on each other, it moves from support into something else. And I don't know what that word is, um, but it's not support. So the last TV show is a new one. It's called Lie to Me. And let me tell you guys, this is a pretty awesome show. I love it. I don't have a video for it because I couldn't find any. It was really sad. So this TV show, um, this man in the front, Cal Lightman, he's a deception expert. So the whole idea of the show is that he is able to look at you and when you're talking to him, he can, ex he can like figure out what your face is telling for emotions. And so he can just figure out if you're lying or not. But one of the really cool things I like about this is that he says, I can tell you he's lying, but I can't tell you why he's lying. Because the truth of a person is complicated. The truth about who someone is and why they act the way they do and, and who they are is very, very complicated. Because even if we look at the surface, we don't know what's happening underneath, and we don't know where they are on their journey, and we don't know what God's working with them on, and we don't know what they're ready for. And it's so complicated because the truth of who someone is is very, very complex. And it's why we have to leave that in Christ's hands. So John 13, 34 through 35 says, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. As fathers, I'm creating a culture um, that, that raises children in a loving environment. I think that includes um, making sure that a child loves others. But I think it goes further than that. I don't think that it's really fair to put an expectation on just fathers or just mothers. I think that we as a church should be creating a culture we should be put, tying it on our hands. We should be tying it on our foreheads, who Christ is and the love that he gives. And we should be showing those around us, especially the children in the church, we should be raising them in a culture that tells them that what's underneath the surface is not embarrassing, that it is okay to bring things to light, that you are supported and you are not expected to do anything you're not ready for, that you are complicated and that is okay. So what does that look like if a church is doing that? I think it looks like this. So Sabina went um, to camp this week. And in front of her are some little girls from her cabin who are accepting Christ. And when they went up, she went up with them to pray with them. And I think this is what it looks like. I think it looks like support and unconditional love. And I think that that starts with our children. And I think it's shown when I come up and I pray with someone or when Amanda comes up and prays with me, I think we show it by our actions. And so the question starts to become like, what are your actions showing? Are your actions leading to this? And I believe they are. I believe our church is amazing at this. I believe that this is an example of our church doing it right. I mean, obviously Matt and Jen doing it right, but us doing it right too, right? But, but how do we show that? So I found a quote from Herman Hesse. It says, we are sun and moon, dear friend. We are sea and land. It is not our purpose to become each other. It is to recognize each other, to learn to see the other and honor him for what he is, each the other's opposite and complement. We are a body and we complement each other. And wherever we are is okay, but we have to love each other where we are. Father, we give you the glory and all the honor and the praise, Lord, that you are, you are the prime example. You are the one who has set the standard for what a good father looks like.
And I thank you, dear God, that it's not dependent and contingent upon me, that that responsibility hasn't fallen solely to us as dads, because we know, Lord, that we still mess up. We still make mistakes, and all of us still operate under a need of grace. But God, we know that you don't make mistakes. Father, that you do everything to perfection, and you set an example for us that we can look forward to. And Father, a standard that we can count on. I pray, dear God, that we would live our lives in accordance with that. I pray, Father, that we would live to the truth of your revelation through your scripture. I praise you, dear God, for Brianna and the message she's brought us, Lord, to to not judge one another and to look beyond the surface projections that we give to each other. I pray, Father, that that would be a reality in each of our lives. I pray that as we depart from the sanctuary, Lord, that we would be able to have a wonderful time of fellowship, enjoying the meal together. I pray, dear God, that you would bless the food, that all would have a a great time, and that we would be truly grateful for uh, the blessings that are ours in Christ Jesus. As we depart from one another's company, Lord, may we abide in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, friends. You are dismissed to go wherever it is you feel like going. Thanks for joining us today. You can find Eustick Road Church of the Nazarene on the web at eusticknaz.org and on many social media sites at Eustick Naz. Thanks, and God bless.